Just look how crazy that is. I'm in a dark room now. That's just the pigment. Hi everybody and welcome back to The Average. Today I've got something really exciting because I have bought this lit glow in the dark paint and I've been waiting to try this for a while and share it with you guys because I thought it'd be something really cool. I've done a few preliminary sketches so I'm ready to go. I've got my idea and we're going to try this out. Basically what you have to do with this lit paint is this is the pigment so you mix it with this super base and this is not sponsored by the way I bought this for myself. I've never mixed my own pigments before so we're going to see how that works out. So let's just uh, go with it shall we? Okay, I'm gonna leave that for now to sit and let's get on with the drawing. Okay guys, let me tell you something. I was a little bit intimidated by this pigment and mixing it myself because I've never mixed pigments before and I thought this was gonna be difficult, but actually it was not. It was super easy and it worked out really nicely. I did a few preliminary sketches for this illustration today and what I found on Instagram and Pinterest for me was this kind of explorer type woman and I drew like a realistic portrait in my sketchbook of her and then I stylized it a bit to look a bit more like this and posed her and I thought what I wanted to do was have this explorer lady just searching this jungle type land and maybe some ghosts in the background and chasing her and she's just not aware of it and not really seeing it just enjoying herself and then i could play with using lots of jungle type themes and different painting techniques that i wanted to try in within an illustration so i'm doing this paint layering technique that i've talked about a couple of times and it's where you just with watercolors you work light to dark as always but then you kind of cut out shapes with your washes and then it gets steadily darker and darker and darker which you'll see happening here. I really like this technique and I've always wanted to try it and use it in combination with this sort of cartoony style that I have and I think it works really well especially in the context of this piece. Of course I wanted to add a little cat there to the explorer story too so she's not alone. She's with her little buddy and I think what I wanted to do was just have the cat looking back at the ghost like hey wait a second um, we're in danger. A sort of Wallace and Gromit type <laughs> of story where Gromit the dog is noticing all these things going down and Wallace is just like da -da -da, in his own head so I like that kind of storyline so I wanted to emulate that within just this illustration and I think this is a really fun piece because I think I can really see a story behind this one and I think what helped me is that I did a lot of preliminary work last night to kind of get the final illustration down. So let's talk about colour. I've been using a lot of blues and purples and pinks recently. I say recently, I think my whole life I've been using those combinations of colours and I'm trying to really stem away from using them but in the end this kind of came out that sort of colour scheme as well. Even though I made it a point in my sort of preliminary work to do colour tests and stuff and I wanted to try out doing just a lot of different greens and maybe some oranges but as I went it just didn't turn out that way so I really have to try harder to try to try and branch out and mix up the color style because I can't really have all my pieces of work always having the same color scheme it just it doesn't really work so I need to push a little bit more maybe ban myself in the next piece from using blues and purples and pinks and just using all the other colors that are available to me that I seem to dislike so much I used a lot of the Molito paint pens in this piece and I think they worked really nicely. They made things just pop a little bit more and yeah, I just, I really enjoyed doing this piece. I use the gouache but I use them a bit like watercolours so they're less opaque than normal, they just, 
I used a lot of water within them and I think they work, they work quite nicely. I will say that the paper I used is this one that I've had for a while and it's not as nice as just a really good watercolour paper so I wish I had had better paper but it, it does the job, I think it's okay for what it is. Touching on the colour scheme again, I'm really glad that I made the centrepiece of this illustration really green and I stuck to my guns on that one. I just think it works quite well because it's different to the outside. It's a bit of a strange composition because I wanted to have a line, lined border where I could paint the glow in the dark paint around her and make her the centre point of this illustration and then have different leaves around the outside and maybe different colour scheme because I think it emulates that feeling of her being in this jungle and travelling quite quickly and seeing all this array of different scenery. Before I did this I did a few sketches in my sketchbook where she was travelling and the landscape was quite normal and it wasn't really this abstract I guess you could say and it didn't it just didn't seem as visually interesting so I wanted to do something a bit different and I think this works nicely and it helps as well to take the eye away from the background a little bit because I think if I had an over detailed background it would have brought the eye to that instead of the main character and then the ghosts. So I think it works, let me know what you think. I also wanted to add some little faces to these rocks that she was stepping on. I had the idea that maybe these are the graves of the ghosts and they sort of have their own personality and the ghosts come up out of these things and she's just nonchalantly stepping on them and I don't know, I think that was kind of my idea with this and I think it's kind of cute and not that spooky so it, it works. I think it's a, it's a cute little illustration. I had to go over the line work for her obviously because I had painted with watercolours so it dulled the line of the ink quite a lot and I think once I went over that it really helped her pop off the page again and I'm glad I did that. I just think it looks quite nice and I'm really proud of this piece and I'm glad that I did all that preliminary work because I think this is something that I've been the most proud of for a while now so it shows that I keep learning this lesson, if you've been watching me for a while, I keep learning this lesson of do the preliminary work and then the final piece will be much better. But no, I always forget. So to talk a little bit about the lip paint, it's made by this man called Stuart Semple. You might have heard of him, he's the guy who took on Anish Kapoor. Anish Kapoor being quite a famous artist, I don't really want to speak about him so if you're interested in him you can look him up, but he claimed this black pigment colour that was all devoid of um, light so it looks really really dark black and then he claimed the rights to it so nobody else on the planet except for Amish Kapoor could use this black. So Stuart Sim Sam Simple, I think I'm saying his name right, invented a black 2.0 and it's basically a very very close formula to that pigment that anyone can use and if you want to use it and buy it you have to click on a waiver that says you're not giving it to Amish Kapoor which is quite funny. So this is another product from their company, I have bought a few things from them that I'm going to be testing um, as the weeks go by because I really like the products and I want to try and use them individually and give them you know a fair amount of time to be used on each piece and yeah I just think this is really fun and you will see now how good the actual glow in the dark paint is. I was actually really pleasantly surprised because I thought yeah it'll be all right I'm sure it'll be like a you know glow in the dark paint it'll be okay but you're gonna see how good it is right now okay so that's the final piece and it looks kind of cool but I think it will look even cooler when we look at it under the um, under the darkness that doesn't make sense when we look at it in darkness let's have a look and also nobody blame me for this i know that annoys you because it annoys me but overall i really like this piece i think it works really well and i really like the fact that i did this kind of technique because i wanted to kind of create that kind of jungle feel and i really like it okay guys we are in the darkest room of my house it's a small bathroom where there are no windows and i just have to show you how insane does this look? <laughs> That's so crazy and awesome. Obviously I need to get a little bit used to painting with the glow in the dark solution because it does look a little bit splotchy but I think that's kind of on me. I think that's awesome. Lights on, lights off. And that's it for me guys. 
Thanks for watching. Please come back and I will see you next time. Bye.